Hi, I'm Johnny from UltimatePaperMache.com and I got my hyena mask done. I'm going to show you how I did this in just a few minutes. In the last video, I showed you how I cut the cardboard out, taped it together, then put a little bit of aluminum foil on in just a few places to kind of round it out. And now what I'm going to show you is how to put the paper mache on there and how I painted it. Now in the video that I put up a couple of days ago, I said that the sculpting was all done and it was ready for the paper mache and in the meantime I changed my mind. Um, I know that when you look at cats help me, uh, when you look at photographs of a hyena they have a lot of hair inside of the ear and what that creates is a really dark uh, shadow right in the middle of the ear but I was thinking nah that's that's too much I'm going to skip that part well, I realized that not only will it improve the design, but it will improve the, um, the ear because this, this is pretty flimsy, even with the reinforcing around the edge where we crumple the aluminum foil. When you put paper mache on there, I'm afraid it's actually going to be t too bendy. Paper mache is really heavy when it's wet, and so I'm just afraid that it's not going to be strong enough. So I'm going to go ahead and put those ear hairs in there, which I wanted in the first place anyway, and I was just trying to be lazy and skip them. I added the hair by crumpling up a fairly large piece of aluminum foil and kind of pressing it into little jagged bits, um, just kind of to, to put it into the shape that big clumps of ear hair would be, and then just taped it to the inside of the ear. And now you can see what a nice deep shadow we have there. And it looks a lot more realistic and it's much stronger. And then I covered the back of the ears with masking tape just to make it um, so, so that the paper mache will have something to stick to. It doesn't like sticking to aluminum foil. So now it's ready for the paper mache. You want to put some plastic down on your table so that you don't get paste all over it. It's kind of a pain in the neck to clean it up. And then tear the hard edges off of your newspaper. The hard edges that are cut by their machine, are um, they just don't smooth up very well on the paper mache, so you need to just throw those out. And then when you have the edges done, tear it in the direction that it actually tears straight, as you can see so that you end up with a lot of strips, some of them wide and some of them narrow, and then cut your strips about four inches long. Now you want to put some hot tap water in a bowl. Uh, you want to use water from the tap that's as hot as you can get it because it makes, the, um, it makes a nice smooth mix. You don't want to heat up that water on the stove though because then you could end up with lumpy gravy. Because I'm going to be making a raw flour paste, I don't really need a recipe. I just put some hot water in the bowl and then add enough flour so that I make it the consistency I want. I happen to like it when it's about, about like heavy cream. Some people like it thicker, some thinner. It's totally up to you. If you happen to be allergic to gluten, then you can use either laundry starch or Elmer's art paste instead. Now you can either paint or kind of uh, smear some of the paste over the mask and then put the dry newspaper over it. I happen to like doing it like I just showed you there. Uh, dip the bottom or just <laughs> I guess one side of the paper on top of the paste and then uh, drag it over the edge of the bowl. That takes all the excess paste off. You don't have a bunch of um, of paste kind of gummed up underneath the, of the paper, but you have plenty to, to keep things all stuck together. Put the strips over the form and press down all the way around with your fingers. Um, you can even put some extra paste on the top. Um, wet paper will mold itself really nicely to the form. Uh, if, the, if the paper isn't wet enough, it's going to have little hard ridges It's going to stick up or it's going to pop out. So do as much as you can to press it down really nice. When you get to the nostrils, use a tool of some kind. Here I'm using the end of a, of a paintbrush and I'm pushing the, the paper way down inside of that nostril. And then put extra paste on the 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 piece that's sticking out because it's going to try to fold over and it needs paste on all of it so that it'll um, when it does fold it'll be folding into a pasted piece of paper you want everything to have paste on it be just really careful in these delicate parts because you want to uh, cover them just as nicely as you can 
You'll also need a tool, in this case a dull knife, in order to get a nice crisp line around the eyes if you happen to have eyeballs instead of eye holes like I do. Um, and you'll also want the knife for making the dip in between the two sides of the muzzle. When you get to the edge, be sure to wrap the paper mache around the, the bottom edge of your cardboard. That will strengthen the edge and it'll also make it look a lot nicer. Now in this particular piece, I think you can see it's it's not going to it's going to wrinkle when I place it down there because of the curve that's under there. I'm going to just tear it. Put one side down. Now put the other side over it and you end up with a real smooth surface. You don't have that wrinkle that you would have if you hadn't torn it. Once you have the first layer on, you might want to go back still it's still nice and wet and make sure that you've got that nice crisp line right down the middle of the front of his muzzle um, nice crisp line around the uh, bottom of his upper lip uh, around his nose around his eyes of course and then you probably want to let this sit for maybe an hour or two just to let it firm up enough so that it's easier to handle when you put on the second layer now my first layer is dry enough so it's a little bit easier to handle. It's not dry completely of course, but dry enough. Now I'm doing the second layer and I'm actually trying to get wrinkles in the paper mache up on this top furry part of his ear. Obviously I'll try to get rid of all of the wrinkles everywhere else, but I want wrinkles on the in the fur area. Just going to scrunch this up. Wrinkle. There we go. Get it way down. You really have to push to get it down into that hole behind there. And with this second layer, I'm doing just like I did before. I'm really pressing down. I want to make sure that this paper mache is not only stuck on really good, but I don't want any air pockets underneath. Now I'm going to cheat, and I'm not going to cover. Uh, this area right here, I probably also won't uh, give a second coat to the really delicate parts of the nose just because I don't want to lose those nice crisp lines. We certainly wouldn't want to do that on the entire mask, but just on those, those few uh, really detailed places I'm only going to put one layer. Now as you can see I'm kind of also squishing out and flattening out the extra paste that always kind of squishes out from underneath your paper mache. I'm just trying to flatten that out just as much as possible so that you don't end up having to do a whole lot of sanding to get rid of uh, extra bumps when you're all done. So go ahead and um, finish them up. Um, make it as smooth as you can. Put them in front of the fan and then I'll be back just as soon as this is dry. Okay, my paper mache a hyena is now dry and it's ready to be painted. Kat uh, heard me talking to you so she's going to come in and help. Now um, I want to emphasize that you want to make sure that your mask is completely dry, absolutely totally dry all the way through because if it isn't you could end up with some mold. Um, if you don't think that it's dry, maybe, you know, maybe it's not dry all the way through, go ahead and turn your oven on to 200 degrees Fahrenheit and stick it in there, um, maybe for an hour even if you have to. Make sure it's dry. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to really lightly sand it. So now I've got Got him sanded. I didn't do very much sanding on him. I just wanted it to smooth out just a couple of places, especially around the eyes and just little wrinkles that might kind of show up. I didn't do any sanding on these ears because I wanted those wrinkles there. Um, I went to a lot of trouble to get those <laughs> on there, so I didn't want them to go away. Now our um, hyena is um, just about three colors. That's all. They're, they have a very simple face. Uh, this is a spotted hyena. Uh, it has spots on his body. They don't have any spots on their face, unfortunately. That would have been kind of fun. He's basically uh, tan on most of his face. He's got a light gray ear, well, two of them. And then his muzzle is a very dark gray and a black nose. 
Now for the first layer of paint, I used some gesso that I bought at the um, at well at Walmart. It was right next to the acrylic paint. It's a primer basically, and it's white usually. Uh, I mixed it up with just a little bit of raw sienna and a little bit of burnt umber, so that when um, the paint that goes on top of it will sh will let this show through, maybe a couple of places, not really very much. Uh, but I want it to be a little bit colored rather than just a stark white. It covers all that newsprint print up so that you can actually see what you're doing. I let the colored gesso dry for about an hour. It doesn't dry as quickly as ordinary acrylic paint, so I did need to leave it for a little bit longer than I usually do. And then I mix up some black and some raw sienna and a little bit of burnt umber, basically the same colors I had in the, um, in the gesso with the addition of the black and then I put just a touch of white in there to lighten it up just a little bit. I'm using the darkest part of it with very little white on the back of the ears and on just a little bit of a, a spot right down in the shadow in the, on the front of the ears underneath those hairs. While the dark gray was still wet on the back of the ear, I mixed some white paint into the dark gray in the bowl and I painted it on the front of the ear. And then I wanted to get it nice, uh, nice and smooth, that gradation between the dark and the light. So I went, I went ahead and, and used my finger to kind of smush it around. It works really good, but you want to make sure that you wash your hands off really soon. I mean, go right now and wash your hands because otherwise you're going to get acrylic paint all over your clothes and the dog and the furniture and anything else. But, you know, it, it really did work kind of nice and, and I, I like the way it worked. Kind of like finger painting, I guess, uh, taking myself back to kindergarten. Then I mixed up some raw sienna, some burnt umber, and some white to make a tan, and I covered the entire rest of the mask. At that point, I had kind of flat colors. I had a flat um, gray on the ears and kind of a flat tan on the face. So I wanted to give it a little bit more interest. So the first thing I did was actually to use the same tan, just watered down, uh, brushed it on the lower portion of the ear and then took it back off again with a paper towel. Um, that helped to kind of give it a, just a little bit more interest and tied it together so that there wasn't a stark line. And then I added just a little bit more white and a little bit more raw sienna to my tan color and used an old kind of ratty brush to make some hair marks. I actually used um, several different versions of this so that there would just be just a little bit more interest on the, the big tan areas. I didn't want it to be all one flat color. I highlighted the area where the eyebrow would be with uh, the same tan but with a whole lot of white added to it. And then in order to get those lighter colors, um, just those strokes to kind of blend in a little bit better with the darker tan, I used a um, paper towel just to blend in the lower portion of those really white strokes. I mixed up some black with some burnt umber to make the black parts warm and not just stark black. And then I painted the nose black and the area around the eye and the eye itself. And I used the same color to make his dark lower lip. Um, hyenas are related to dogs and they have dark lips just like dogs do. Then I added some water to that uh, very dark color. I wanted the muzzle to be slightly lighter than the nose, but I didn't want to add any white in order to make a lighter gray. So just adding water really worked. And it also makes those brush marks show so that it looks like hairs. The watered down uh, dark color went all the way up to right between his eyes, a little bit under his eyes, and then I watered it down even more to make that uh, darker area right under his cheek. And I did emphasize his mane just a little bit because it's kind of an interesting thing where the, where the hair just kind of sticks up into a point right there, so I added just a little bit more right at the top. Since my mask is going on the wall, I'm not actually wearing it, so that's why I have eyeballs instead of eye holes. And eyes need a reflection, a little spot of, of light. Um, I mix up a very, very light blue using ultramarine blue and white. I make fairly large patch and then I put a white, a pure white spot right in the middle. 
a lot of people do the reflection in different ways. Everybody has kind of a signature way of doing it. Um, it just as long as you get a spot on there that looks like a reflection, it doesn't matter exactly how it's done. Uh, you may want to play with that and just to see how you like to do it or go online and see how other people paint eyes to make them look realistic. Now I'm going to let the acrylic paint dry overnight and then when I know it's all done and it's cured really well I'm going to give it a um, probably two coats of matte acrylic varnish that'll protect the paint and it'll give it a really nice finish. So that's that's how my hyena mask turned out. If you make one, I sure do hope that you come out and show it to me and to all of my other readers out on ultimatepapermache.com. I would love to see you there.